The talk on the street today say, come hear the wonderful music. And the first thing I hear is how can people be so nice? Still it brings us joy that this community are there for each other. That ain't never gonna change Everyone here seems to know you Even a stranger will treat you like a friend Just to look a little closer To see the true beauty of this hidden town And when you know how much things here have changed Yes, there's hardship But it's a star on clouded Creighton Mono is an interesting community in that it's been creative, really creative for about 40, 50 years. There's been some spark in Creighton Miller, which other places don't seem to have. I think that getting together in person in these community events is even more valid now than it's ever been, and it's more needed and crucial now than it's ever been. It was just really fun. It felt like there was definitely like more of a momentum about it, and having like lots of different activities on was just it just felt like such a community atmosphere like everyone was coming together and we were all taking pride in Craig Miller. Seeing old faces before Covid and then new faces and also seeing people that was isolated in their homes it meant something that that's what they needed needed to get out and not feel alone I mean, the people of Craig Miller, they're the salt of the earth. They ought to ought me hard working folk. So why shouldn't they be encouraged to get involved? So I've done things up here which I never would have dreamed of doing back home in Liverpool. You know, loads and loads of stuff, from stained glass windows to volunteering to art, creative writing, singing, you know, performing. Just love it. A sense of belonging, a sense of place where people come together, share common goals and interests, and where you can um, you can sing or you can do creative creative writing or art. And you've got the Bridge Out Farmhouse, you've got the White House, all these different areas. It's Richmond School where we do our choir. Uh, so it's some place where you can come along, feel you're connecting with people, and engage in something purposeful and, and, and constructive. I really liked the atmosphere that was in the community over the weekend of the festival. It had the kind of diversity that the big Edinburgh festivals aspire to have and, and, and can't quite get. <laughs> so I think, you know, Craig Miller and Nidri were definitely, you know, leading the way in terms of how to do community engagement, how to do um, a community festival. I thought, it was, I just, I, I loved it for that. There were parts of me thinking, wow, we've actually got together again. And it was, it was a great, great experience. 
Well, my name is Ashley O'Dee, and I've been a member of the Scottish Chamber Orchestra in the violin section for 15 and a half years now. <clears throat> Through the Scottish Chamber Orchestra's creative learning department, um, that is the connection with Craig Miller. And consequently, uh, last year, we performed at the Craig Miller Festival. Quite a few musicians within the orchestra work for the creative learning department and there is a residency here um, connecting the Scottish Chamber Orchestra and Craig Miller so then the Craig Miller Festival kind of happened as well. <laughs> well Stan and Mabel was the idea of the um, former director of the creative learning department um, and it's just a brilliant story you know it's about a dog and a cat <laughs> and an orchestra of animals so I mean in a way um, it is perfect for an orchestra like the Scottish Chamber Orchestra to take on that story and it was really fun to do like wearing dog and cat ears is really quite a fun yeah <laughs> why not <laughs> and also the music of Paul Rissman is really fantastic so it really kind of shows the orchestra in a fantastic light the songs are great um, and I think a few people came up to me a few weeks after the last Stan and Mabel and they were saying my kids haven't stopped singing those songs so they really are very catchy so that's great. <laughs> My name is Cara Whelan and I live in Craig Miller, live in Nidri and have done for the last 19 years. Uh, I also work at Craig Miller Books for Babies, which is a project of Craig Miller Literacy Trust. Uh, we're a local charity and I've worked there for 20 years now. So I've been involved in the community for a long time. And I remember when I started at Books for Babies, I remember uh, the festival has been something that happened every summer and we would do um, an event as part of as part of the festival. So it was really exciting to see the festival being revived again. Last year for the first time, I also got involved in a personal capacity. Uh, I took part in the open mic session at, the, at Lyra, uh, where I, I recited one of the poems that I, that I had written. So I had kind of two, two roles that I played in the festival this year, one for uh, Books for Babies and the Literacy Trust, and one um, as, as somebody who lives in the community uh, wanting to take part in the in the performance um, aspect of it. Sharing stories, reading is just, it's such a crucial part um, of, of children's development. We give the first book to babies when they're 10 days old. Um, so babies in Craig Miller for the last 25 years have been getting a book when they're 10 days old. And nobody in the community, no family that um, that we've met has ever thought that that's a strange idea. 
um, because it's so accepted now and it's actually, it, it's part of the culture of the, of the community. There was, you know, different things going on in different places. I loved how the space in front of the library was being used, how the library itself was being used, the garden was being used, um, the bit along Walk Up Avenue, how that was being used. I just loved the, the vibe about the place. Uh, my name is Karen Lam. Uh, I live in Kremula. So um, I'm a sole trader who makes jewelry at home. And that's, what, that's how I uh, got into the festival. I applied for a store. I, I get to meet a lot of people in my store. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, Karen, I like your jewelry. Um, uh, everything's going on well, uh, good luck. And it's very nice and encouraging, actually. And I get to meet other people um, from different stores as well. Hello, I'm Michael Inman. I'm a local artist and I'm basically having a little art stall here today selling some of my works. I've been inspired by local landscapes and places around the area. Can you tell me about some, some particular bits of your work? Yeah, so for instance this one is called Winter Wood. This is from the local hills of the Pentlands. I've been basically carving these from blocks of wood, which then I varnish and then I use inks to then mix with the colours and then print these onto nice cards on, uh, such as you see here. Oh. A lot of the art in here, I'm thinking about sustainability in mind, sort of thinking about how are these uh, reusable materials, how I can sort of make an impact with my artwork, exploring myths, legends and stories of the mm -hmm. landscapes and, and environmental ethos really. So my name is Carolina and I'm just selling lots of things uh, that are handmade. So these are hand crochet um, neck warmers and scarves and some hair scrunchies and some pet beds. And um, these are actually made by my friend Joy, who is a super talented Indian woman. Uh, she hand paints things with um, acrylic paint and it's, it's very, very delicate type of work. She's very talented. We have a stash of uh, small instruments and they tend to be plastic just so that kids can do anything with them so they won't break, you know. But to give them an idea as to what it feels like. Um, we have a small pink violin, for example, that's usually, that's usually very popular, <laughs> you know. And they just to give children an, a, a sensation of actually what it feels like. Because it is, we've been doing it for years, so we kind of forget that. And we're always kind of like going, oh, we've got to practice and we've got to do more and it's got to be better and it's this. But actually for that, most musicians, I'm not sure whether we can really remember the first time we picked up an instrument. And sometimes to see the face of a child who is like, can get a note out of um, this plastic clarinet or whatever, and they're like, oh, that's amazing. Do you know, in just that moment, it's, like, it, it, it's, a, it's a lovely reminder, actually, of how special that can be, you know, um, yeah, so that's a really good thing. I think there were maybe five or six musicians wandering around, and it is a bit like, you know, you find that children start to follow them, you know, so it is, it, yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> My name is Julie Berman. Um, I'm a resident of Craig Miller. I've been here for about 13 years and um, I am very much into the community that I live in. I'm very proud to live in this community and I'm a great supporter of community arts of which there is a lot of here. My entire family were all musicians um, and my son as well who I've raised in Craig Miller and he's a, a producer. Now I raised him in the High Flats along there where they, form, they filmed Trainspotting 2 and uh, he's written over 300 and recorded over 300 songs in his bedroom. <clears throat> so for me, the music and creativity has been incredibly important because I've, that's the thing I've most encouraged in my son and he's grown up really well here. My name's Miranda Beard. I think that it's really important for children to be able to um, have, have a way to express themselves through art or, or theatre or music. Um, it's certainly for, for my son, he can, you know, he's, he's quite a shy boy, he's maybe lacking in confidence in some areas, but I definitely feel that, you know, being involved in drama and theatre production and things, 
you know, it, it's really, really helped his confidence. So if it can help him, then I know that it can help any other child that's, that's struggling with these things. Um, and just, just knowing that you're not on your own, <laughs> basically, I think is really important. My name is Jim Riley, and I was one of the performers at the Craig Miller Festival last year. I mean, Craig Miller is somewhere I've been involved with for 23 years. I've, I've been involved with Thistle Foundation, which is how I know Craig Miller. But I've always been interested in its culture and history and Helen Crummy and all the other great people who established the original festival. But just actually taking part in it really felt quite a, quite, quite a privilege just to be, to say, I've, I've got a, now I've got a medal thing. I performed at Craig Miller Festival. That was, that was really nice. For me, music's one of the most important things in, in life. It's as important as breathing in some ways. It's just, yeah, so the whole thing's really, really important. It's, it's you, you, can, you can survive on bread alone, but what things like art and poetry and music and painting and art, these are things that make life worthwhile, that bring the color into life. I remember in the Craig Miller Festival, there was this fantastic um, kitchen, not very far from where I'm sitting, with this incredible food from different countries, you know, and that in itself is also wonderful to see um, people who originate maybe from different cultures some countries coming all together and sharing what they have to share. Oh, and there was dancing in the kitchen as well. I do remember that. After everyone had eaten, then they started doing all sorts of different, different dances in the kitchen, which was actually really good to see, you know, but we couldn't take part, unfortunately, because we were in here. <laughs> My name is Asha Singh. They told me to make three dishes <laughs> because no one was doing a meat, meat dish. So she wanted, uh, they had asked me to do some meat dishes as well as vegetable dishes. So I done, I done alugopi, I done, oh yeah, saag paneer, and I did chicken tikka. Um, and I think, I think I made pakori as well. So there was a few dishes I made in the same festival. It went, it was good. It was really good. Good buzz. My name's Frank Smith. You know, it was uh, pleasurable stuff. I'd never, I wouldn't even know how to produce but it was very tasty, <laughs> you know. I wouldn't know how to do it, but I'm thankful that they did. <laughs> and also other people who were performing their songs and singing, even the young kids who were dancing, you know, it's all enjoyable. Well, Lyra had their 10th um, birthday party um, and that was really fantastic. It was so much fun. They had a great band. They were like a ska type of band and they were just so much fun. They'd worked with the children on the lyrics um, and yeah, there was like different activities that were going on. They had kind of making different like arts and crafts. Um, they had these incredible dancers who looked like they were wearing kind of, I don't know, grass skirts and things, I can't describe them. The Birdmen were, um, it was like nothing I'd ever seen in real life before. Um, I guess tribal, it seemed quite like tribal kind of dancing. Um, really interactive, almost scary at times or in intimidating at times um, because they really kind of come up close in, in your face and they use um, every kind of prop that they have going to their advantage in terms of making the dance really um, energetic. I did go to the open mic because I was meant to be performing in it. I thought that that was the heart of the festival for me because the previous festival has been all about performance and performing arts and that to me was where everyone was performing. There was some amazing performances, we got to see new talents and uh, for me that was the heart of it. The, well the open mic highlight was performing because I've got to two friends Frank and Jim Dalgetty who have been friends with for 20 years plus to be playing music with. So playing, playing with those two is always a pleasure and playing live is always wonderful. So that was my highlight. The storytelling was good. And I, I've listened to loads and loads of people who can tell good yarns and there's, they're few and far between. Because you're not gonna just tell a yarn, you're gonna perform it. The singers were all good. As I said, the kids dancing. You, you, you've got, just go with an open mind and listen to as much of it as you can. It's all good. Even the people who have never been should go. 
I was involved about three events with it. Uh, the first one was the open mic uh, session, which was great because there were loads of performers, none of whom was trying to show off or show or Everybody was just very relaxed and, and, and pleasant with each other. And it was just a very pleasant sense of people appreciating the different skill sets, storytellers, musicians, all kinds of different things like that. So I really enjoyed that one. Some of the stories that people can tell, you look at people and they're just like you or me, and you don't know what's inside them until they start writing these stories or these poems or they perform in these songs. You, know, you think, God, where did that come from? You know, and it's just ordinary people. But they're not ordinary, they're extraordinary. And they perform. And people should be encouraged and brought in to do more. And that's why the Craig Miller Festival should go from strength to strength. Um, but we're okay, we're okay. 